I'm here with my handy cameraman, Julio. Hey, yo. And we're, we are here with a woman who you may not know, but who is likely one of the most influential African-American radicals of the 1960s, but also probably the least acknowledged. Today, we're going to be doing a dozen questions with Denise Oliver. Let's go. Hi, Denise. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Come on in. What's in that big bag of yours? Oh, this? I always have a couple of interesting things in here. Ooh, what's that? This is a picture of me as a baby. I'm wearing a red diaper because I was a red diaper baby. Which means that I was raised by communism because I had communist parents. So you're a communist then? Well, no, actually. I took a different route than my parents. I first joined, instead of the Communist Party, I first joined uh, the NAACP, and then I joined Students for a Democratic Society, and then SNCC, and then after college, I joined the Young Lords, and then the Black Panther Party. Have you always been interested in activism yet? Well, actually, yeah. I mean, the first experience I had with activism was when my school was doing a duck and cover drill, but I refused to do it because it was under the threat of a communist bomb, which was not going to happen. Mm. What's that other thing you have? Oh, this? It's a brown beret. It was part of the uniform for the young lords. So every time we went out to protest or do one of our programs, we would wear this so that people would know that we were associated with the young lords. Stop being here. You want to take a walk? Let's take a walk then. What was your experience like in the Young Lords? What did you fight for? Well, I fought for all the things that everyone else in the organization did, like healthcare, education, and building community. But I also fought for some things that I noticed were problems in the Young Lords. Really? What were those problems? Well, for one thing, in the beginning, one of the points from the 13-point platform said that machismo is revolutionary. But me and all of the other women realized that machismo is just bad. How did that go over? Well, I had some pull with the young lords because I was the officer of the day and I was the first woman on the central committee. So people trusted me. Plus, my background in my arts and music high school led me to connect with more people through Spanish music and black culture. Was the diversity in your environment important to you? Yes, it was extremely important. It wasn't just blacks or Hispanics fighting, it was everyone from so many different cultures. We had some media too that was dedicated to cultural diversity, like our publication RAD and Palante Siempre Palante. I know there were, uh, you mentioned Hispanic and black people fighting together. How was that in your transition in Black Panther Party? Well, you see, the young lords moved to Puerto Rico to fight for their independence. And I had to stay here because I really wanted to focus on U.S. politics. And the Black Panther Party gave me a place where I can continue my activism, but in the U.S. Thanks, Denise. Anything else you'd like to say to bring this interview to a close? Hmm. Well, I just want to say that everyone has their own unique culture that is really important. And this cultural diversity lets communities form. When we acknowledge everyone's intersectionality, it creates a broader vision for our struggle. Thank you, Denise. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.